Well, welcome to another Lightblade Learning Lab. Uh, today we're going on a bit of a Mission Impossible. Now, although I'm trying to make this series more of a demonstration than a discovery series, there are times when I haven't been here before. And I did warn you at the beginning of this series that sometimes this would happen. On my other machine, I do a lot of discovery and research work um, so that I can look a bit more competent when I demonstrate things to you. Today I have no experience at all. So we're going to dive in at the deep end and you're going to see how I and maybe you should approach dealing with new materials that you haven't tackled before. Now what I've got here is something that's called special rubber for laser engraving and Think Laser have asked me if I could show you how to make rubber stamps. It's a bit like asking the Pope to run a marathon. When do you think he last did it? You're right, never. That's the same with me and this material. So we've got to learn quite a few things about this material before we can attempt to make a rubber stamp. And that's the process that I hope I'm not going to make an idiot of myself demonstrating to you. Here's the basic machine with its bars and we've got to work out, first of all, we're going to be ultimately engraving this material. Yeah, look. <laughs> It's a bit like trying to nail a smoke ring to the wall. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure it's sitting exactly flat on there because I can feel it rippling. So that's not a good start for engraving because the back of the rubber stamp is not going to be seen. It's going to have to be attached to something. It wouldn't matter if we use this. That will support it nice and flat. And it won't matter if we do mark the back as we cut across all these honeycombs. The one big thing that I don't like about the honeycomb table is that the air that comes into the machine goes down. And that's not good news when you're trying to engrave. You want, them, you want the airflow to go across the surface. So it's debatable whether or not I should block off the rest of this here. Well there we go, look we've got a piece of material that blocks off most of the uh, most of the air that wants to go down there and we'll be just working in this little corner here. So we shall have a fairly good airflow across the surface. Well we're going to look at this test through the, uh, through the glass because uh, I want first of all to make sure we've got an airflow running across the machine so I've got the cover closed and because this is a rubber material that I've not used before, um, even though it says for laser engraving, that doesn't mean to say it's safe to breathe. And the first thing we're going to do is something that I call a matrix test. And basically it's a scan test to see just how this material is going to perform. Now this matrix test will be available on the, uh, on the Think Laser website. And it's available in two forms. This first form that I'm going to use is with air assist. Normally, if we're doing engraving, we don't want air assist. But this is a sort of a plasticky, rubbery material and it might produce a lot of smoke and fumes. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Certainly not a lot going on there. Now we come on to the slightly higher power. We've gone about 10%, I think, is the first one. And then this second line is uh, about 30%, I think. And then the next line is about 65%. And what we've got, three different powers, four different speeds. So we've got 400 millimetres a second, 300 millimetres a second, 200 millimetres a second, and then 100 millimetres a second. So 
first of all, we have got a distinct burnt rubbery smell. Doesn't mean to say it's dangerous, but it's, it's an observation. Now, what I can see on here is a lot of dust. And as you can see, it is only dust. So it's interesting, this material is obviously burning away whatever the binder is in this material and it's leaving behind this dust which must be a filler material within this rubber. So <coughs> it's an interesting material, that's all I can say. Um, it's not burning and it's giving quite a nice clean cut. Now whether or not we can see lines in the bottom there, even though I've got this set to point 0.1, it could be that we could maybe defocus it a bit, but then again, all we're really interested in is removing the background. And the question is, how much of the background do we need to make a rubber stamp? Well, that one there looks to be about probably half, maybe half a millimetre. That one there looks to be quite deep. So that's 100 millimetres a second, and I would suggest that that's probably nearly a millimetre deep. Right, so now we're going to try and do a test square, and we're doing this at 8 millimetres a second and 68%. bit marked on the surface but not terribly so. The edges actually again quite clean it's dusty to start with. I wonder whether we can go a bit faster. The faster we can cut generally the better. You can see the smoky burn around the outside and it hasn't made it and it hasn't made it through. It'll probably push out because it's pretty flexible. It'll tear out, but that's not what we want. So it looks as though eight millimeters a second is what we're gonna be stuck with. We now know the engraving parameters and the cutting parameters, so we can go and design our stamp. Well, we're not gonna make a monstrous size stamp because I haven't got a big stamp pad. So we'll choose a convenient rectangle. I'm going to make that 50 mil by 25 millimeters. Now I'm going to do a control copy, control C. Then I'll put the arrow there and I'll do a control V. And I'll put the arrow here and do a control V and a control V. Now all become clear in a minute. This one here, that's our outside shape. And I'm going to make that blue because I want that to be a cut layer. And eight millimeters a second is what we need. Cut, blowing yes, output yes, speed 68, 68, that's fine. Okay, so that's our cut layer there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that by two millimeters overall in each direction. So I'm going to make that 48 and that one 23. And then I'm going to make this one two millimeters smaller than that. So it's going to be 46 by 21. OK. I'm now going to pull these all together and overlap them. And I'll do that by using this and this and there we go they're all nicely grouped together now I just pull this one in so that it doesn't take up as much space when I look at it on the preview screen so we've got a blue cut layer and we've got black scan layers let's just check that scan output speed yes we decided 200 millimeters was the right speed we're blowing and we're scanning and we're doing that at 
Yeah, 65%. That's what we agreed on. And we're going to set the interval down here. We'll leave that at 0.1, which is where I had it before. So that's probably going to be okay. Because it seemed to work all right on the scan tests, 0.1. Okay, now we want to put some text in here. And first of all, I think we'll set this to a fairly bland and simple text, Arial quite a thin text as well which is what I want I don't want a bold text and I'll explain why in a minute we set the width to a hundred percent and size height of it five millimeters that sounds pretty reasonable it's small but not too small um, uppercase T E S T that's pretty inventive isn't it and there it is so now we can move that into our box and now we'll put some more text in let's be a little bit more creative this time should we and just to emphasize that I think we'll turn it into something bolder how about aerial black uh, yeah aerial black that should do and then we'll try and slip that in there and it's just too big so what we do we just squeeze that down a little bit yeah now it will go in there we go like that okay looks as though we're nearly done now for you for those of you that haven't done this sort of um what can I call it, vector text and graphics before in RD Works. There are some interesting rules that apply with scanning. Let's just preview it and I'll show you what I mean. I can see from there that the test and the top secret are cut. They're not engraved. Have I got those accidentally on the wrong layer? We certainly have. Look, this text is in blue and it ought to be in black on a scan layer and not on a cut layer so let's go back and preview it again so everything that's white will be scanned is that what we want no because if we cut test and top secret and the frame the only thing that will be standing out will be the background. So this is totally the wrong way round. How do we get it the other way round? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. The rules for scanning are, if you've got everything, everything scanned on the same layer, from the outside, the first complete object, in other words, there's not going to be a gap in it, that it comes across, will be engraved. And so that frame there between the first and second line will be engraved. The next section will be blank. So that means all of this background will be blank. And then the next section after the blank section, which will be all these individual letters, will be engraved. That's not what we want. Now, just for the moment, I'm going to put these two items here into a group so that they don't get messed around when I align things. So I'm gonna pop those into a group and then I'm going to marquee all of this lot and we're going to align them both horizontally and vertically like that. Now nothing seems to have changed except that what I've got, I've got black lines, black lines, black lines and black text and my blue line has disappeared into the background. That's my cut layer. I mean, let's predict how that black line will have affected things. It comes across this black layer first and so it will engrave between that outer line and this inner line and then it will not engrave across the next boundary and then it will engrave everything that's where my arrow is which is all this background and then the next boundaries that it comes across will be the letters where it will not engrave and we can confirm that with the preview engraved not engraved engraved not engraved 
that's exactly what we want. Black is the surface and white is the background that will be engraved. So that's great. But there is one more thing to be done. There are several things to be done, actually, but one important thing to be done. These are very thin letters. And the problem with thin letters is they may well wobble when you try to um, use them as a stamp. And so there is a facility built within RD Works, and let's bring the parameters back up again. There's a facility here called Ramp Effect. So we're going to click Ramp Effect, and underneath it brings up a window called Ramp Length. Now currently I've got that Ramp Length set to 0.3. And what that means is that down the side of each letter there will be a little 0.3 wide embankment. Let's put it that way, a buttress, a slope. Now, to make this a little bit clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to one millimetre. And we're going to see what it looks like on the preview. And there we go. Now, you get a bit of an idea of how it works from the preview. You can see these abutments and slopes down the side of each letter and they will obviously stiffen these very thin letters up. It doesn't really matter about these thick letters because they're stiff enough to hold themselves up. But hey, one millimetre is a silly amount because look you can see things are beginning to join together. So I don't think we need anywhere near point, we don't need anywhere near one millimetre. So we'll go back and we'll reset that again to about We'll set it to point 0.3. OK. Now we can take a quick preview of that again and you'll see that they're still there. But they're much more compact and they don't join up with each other. They don't merge up between the letters. OK. So I think that's the job done. We're ready to save it and output it to a file. Ah. No, we're not. Anybody spot the deliberate error? Put some handles around the whole of that. And let's do this. Now does it make more sense? So we save that to a file, pop out to the machine and see if we can make it work. Now, most of the smoke is going back. It's not coming out of the machine. It might not seem that to you, but... Uh, That's the right way to do it. Close the door and have just a little bit of airflow right across the machine as you can see the difference it makes. First of all, yes, it has just about cut out. And then, <coughs> look at all that dust, look, just sitting in there some sort of uh, powder, some sort of filler that's obviously used in there. The edge just cleans off, even though it is a little bit dark. Again, it looks as though it's burnt dust of some sort because it comes up pretty clean. I'm surprised about that. And if we look at it carefully, we can see that the letters are very slightly tapered. Which is exactly what we want. We want these thin letters here to be supported. What I've got here is a piece of white perspex, just because it happens to be white. And on the back, I've attached a piece of strong double-sided tape. This is industrial strength double-sided tape. So there we go, there's our little stamp holder. And what I should do is peel off that and we'll stand it on edge so that we get the edges nicely lined up. And we'll pop that down in front of it. 
like that. And there we go, that's nicely lined up. And we've got our top secret stamp. Here we've got my top secret classified document and it's written in invisible ink for double security reasons as well as encoded. So if you just pop that on the ink pad and me not knowing how to use the ink pad I think. There we go, I think we've fixed it now. There we go, we've got the secret now. Scrub it across the si scrub it across the ink pad, don't blob it. We just need a thin film on the surface. Well that wasn't as embarrassing as I thought it might be. It turned out to be quite a straight road that we were travelling. So I'm very pleased with the end result of that. Um, nothing particularly dangerous about it. The material was pretty easy to cut. It was certainly very easy to engrave. It's one of the nicer materials that I've worked with apart from acrylic. So thanks for your time. And I'll catch up with you in the next session.